The story of the hero Link, who, in the imprisoning war, saved all the world from slavery, whose courage had no equal, is a grand tale which would, I'm sure, bring pleasure to your ears. And thusly, I begin the tale. It begins, like many others, at the beginning when it starts, then it continues on until it finds its climax near the end, whereupon the events after it has transpired are chronicled, and it all comes to its end, or, if you will, a new beginning. The tale which I'm about to tell begins with a dream. A nightmare. Down comes the drawbridge, a horse draws near, a white horse with two riders. The boy jumps now out of harm's way. One rider, a girl, throws at him something he cannot see, hurtles towards him like the goddesses flew towards the barren primordial land which, upon which they created life. After the horse has passed, one more comes from the gate. It is blacker than the heart of cruel Majora, with eyes bright as the fire at the center of the universe. A man looks down from the horse and says nothing, only raises his hand. His palm glows purple with all the evil that rots in less savory realms. The boy falls over in pain, hearing naught but the man's haughty, supercilious laughter, like the mad laughter of the ancient King Icona before he was slain. The boy awakens to find a fairy hovering over him. Frantically, she says, How can it be that Hyrule's savior can so often sleep? Awake, now, for the great Decatree has called for you. And with that, Link and the fairy left his house and started down the path to the Decatree. Along the way, he met his friend Saria a green-headed girl and the only denizen of the forest who acknowledged his existence besides the boss, who was called Mido. Saria said, Link, you have a fairy! That's great news! Link told her what he was doing. The great decatry has summoned you? Get going then! And off he went. As he came to the entrance to the decatry's great meadow, Mido stood there blocking his path. A wimp like you has no business with the tree! Link told him of the summons, and the boss replied, Wimp, you'll not pass unless you arm yourself, for the meadow is much too dangerous for the likes of you. Link went off, and returned not much later with a sword and shield, and Mido reluctantly let him pass. The Decatree's meadow was vast and full of those foul Dekubabas, monsters that plague all fo forest goers with their slobbery, sharp toothed jaws. And well, that's really it. Link went to see the tree, slicing in half the monsters, and when he was done, the wise tree spoke to Link. He said, Link, brave lad, an anathema hath been laid upon me by the desert's king of thieves Ganondorf, who is a fell man as can walk on Din's own earth. I have brought thee here, that thou mayest rid me of my curse, and in doing so, start to fulfill thy own destiny." Link did not inquire as to what that meant, when he walked into the tree's gaping mouth. Inside, he saw the tree was hollow, and his floor was not wood, but actually a vast hole draped with a vaster spider's web, as though all of the spiders of the world had been set to the task of carpeting the carvenous innards of the tree, and thusly guard whatever was afflicting the old plant enough to cause him to summon the young outcast of the forest. Link saw that he could not go through the web, and so, instead, Finding that the wall was coarse and dressed with vines, he scaled up the insides of the tree. He came to the top, but found not. Tired he was after climbing, so he sat down to think about what, what, what he was to do next. When then, he thought he heard something and rose to see what it was, 
but he slipped and fell down onto the huge web which failed to break his fall. It tore and dropped him into the water that was higher than his head, which broke his fall more successfully than did the web. He swam out and climbed onto a ledge, on top of which a doorway led into a room that was not lit by the eerie omnipresent glow of the top part of the Deku Tree. Link went cautiously through. When a door slammed behind him, a huge monster fell from the ceiling. This, he knew, was the curse he had been sent to purge. Fighting bravely with his sword and a slingshot he had found, it came to pass that Link had slain the beast. And as he left the tree, he was commanded to sit and listen to the Deku Tree's dying words. I am dying, quoth the plant, but thy efforts were not in vain. I was doomed both before thou beganest, but thou hast cured me of my affliction. Yet I cannot live longer than I already have. And then the tree caused a stone to levitate, a clear green stone that shone with the splendor of the sun when it first rose over Death Mountain's great peak. This is the spiritual stone of this forest. Thou willest need it on thy journey. I bid thee both farewell. And with that did the great Deku Tree pass away to a better place. Link solemnly left the forest and almost forgot to be blamed by Mito for killing the tree. Saria waited by the bridge to the outside world in which it was said no child of the forest could live. She said her goodbyes and gave him a gift an ocarina, handmade just like her own that she often played. With tears in her eyes, Link left with not a word, only continued his journey to the castle of Hyrule, where his destiny now lay.